centered. You hit the button. Mm -hmm. Okay, Ron. Right. Wrong. Okay, everybody, welcome. It's going to be an awesome half hour of help tonight. We're going to be talking about probably one of the most abundant minerals in the body, calcium. You know, I read uh, the Wall Street Journal every day, the USA Today. I try to read the New York Times a lot. It's amazing how much information is in these newspapers that affects the American economy. See, I think sometimes as consumers, you don't realize that what you do creates billions of dollars for the pharmaceutical industry and the, the medical machine that's going on in the world today. So just recently, I want you to read this, because you're going to be fascinated by it. It says, is there a safe period of time to sit in the sun to get sufficient vitamin D, but not get skin cancer? Listen to the remark. You'll get different answers depending on who you ask. The nonprofit Vitamin D Council, which I never even knew there was one, so it's the nonprofit Vitamin D Council says that, listen to this, 15 to 20 minutes of noonday sun exposure twice a week will give most fair skinned people in most of the continental U.S. sufficient vitamin D. You hear what I just said? So they're having everybody believe that you have to put vitamin D for every aspect but you only need 20 minutes twice a week. The article goes on to say this, you are more likely to get skin cancer, most of which are benign if you sit in the sun, but studies are, not sh are now showing, which I read this to you, that you're more likely to die of other kind of cancer if you don't get enough vitamin D. So it's kind of like, you're darned if you do, and you're darned if you don't. So 20 minutes in the sun every day. Listen to this one. If I just get to get 20 minutes of sunlight a day, does it be in one sitting or can it accumulate enough uh, by being in the sun off and on during the day? Now, you're talking 20 minutes. I don't know about 20 minutes in your life, but 20 minutes in my life is a flash. Here's their answer. Those 20 minutes could be intermittent, but it must be when the sun is high enough in the sky that so that your shadow is shorter than you are. Now, I don't know about you guys, but I don't go walking around. <laughs> You got my point? So we are making such a major challenge with sunshine and calcium in our society today that, you know, let's just make it really simple. So the purpose tonight is to simplify it for you. Calcium in your health. Calcium is needed for bone and skin development. Okay, and skeletal development. I'm sorry, it's also for skin, but calcium is important for bone. And I know that most of you know that. A couple things you may not know. When individuals have bold legs, bold legs is a sign to me that you have a deficiency in minerals, most commonly calcium. Which you may or may not know, top bullet, sugar depletes calcium. People hate when I say that. People don't like to think that sugar is bad for anything. So if you consume sugar, you're going to have a potential to have a deficiency in calcium. Now listen to this. This is why calcium is so important. Are you ready? I'm going to give you the nugget of a lifetime right now. Calcium literally glues cells together in your body. That's very important. Calcium is the glue that helps hold cells together in your body. What I have found from my experience, people that suffer from shingles is because they don't have enough calcium. Because shingles is caused by a virus. People who catch colds, it's usually because they don't have enough calcium in their body. Why do you think that most people get colds during the wintertime? Not exposure to sun, they're eating too much sugar from holidays. So during the summertime, if you're in the sun a lot, too many parties, just like some of you talked to me today, I had one patient came in that was having some lung challenges, and it was because she just got done eating too much sugar. Summertime sugar can be devastating. So I just want you to be aware of that. Calcium is used by nerves and muscles. If you get leg cramps at night, it's commonly caused by a calcium deficiency. Leg cramps at night. You notice that we have the BP test. As a patient, when you come into the office, you're having major problems with leg cramps at night, oftentimes we'll do the leg blood pressure test. It's very simple. We talk in my book, Dr. Bob's Drugless Guide to Balancing Female Hormones. We put a blood pressure cuff on your leg. We pump it up. 
it should pump up to at least 200. If it does not, and you have pain, we might put a calcium lactate in your mouth. There's something called, are you ready for this? The neurolingual route. You know how nitroglycerin, you can put it in your mouth within milliseconds, it affects the heart? It's neurolingual, it affects, it's physiologic. So some people might have leg cramps at night because they don't have enough iodine in their body. Or they might not have enough vitamin F in their body. We can take somebody who can pump that blood pressure up to about 160, put a calcium in their mouth, and it blasts over to 200. We can put an iodine in their mouth, and it's just phenomenal. We have patients that have suffered that with years and found out what it's causing, and it's oftentimes lack of calcium. This is one of those nuggets that I was blessed to learn. Bullet number three. Fevers in children. Fevers in children are commonly caused. Not always. I'm not telling you to not think about an upper respiratory infection, et cetera, et cetera. But commonly caused in children not enough calcium. I just learned this along the way when I was growing up, that if you were having a fever, my dad used to always stand us against the wall and measure us and two weeks later, go back and measure us, we're always a quarter inch taller. You say, why is that? Because the fever was a sign that your body needed calcium, and your body needed calcium because guess what you're ready to do? Grow. Okay, so growing pains are a sign of a low thyroid gland. Fevers are a sign of a low thyroid gland. Growing pains, thyroid, cold hands and cold feet are a sign of a low thyroid gland. So if you have a low thyroid gland, you can have cold hands and cold feet. So if you have a grandchild or a child that has growing pains, think calcium, think low iodine. Okay, that's really, that was really awesome for me to learn that because I had that problem when I was a kid. Osteoporosis and medication slash osteoclast. Causes of osteoporosis. Now, I'm going to share something with you. This is also really important. Sally Fields. You know how much money they must have paid Sally Fields to advertise Fosamax? She probably has a Boniva. place. In, oh, what is it? Boniva. Boniva. I'm sorry. Same difference. There I'm it, to her it is. Oh, yeah, I'm sure. She has to take it once, once a, a month. month. <laughs> Thank you for correcting me. Sorry, Sally. So anyway, now listen to this because this, really, this is really interesting. I wrote a term down there you might not have ever heard of before. It's called osteoclast. Osteoclasts are the bone cells that take away dead and decaying bone from your body. Boniva, Fosamax, etc. work by stopping osteoclasts from doing their job. So you get this false sense of security that you have good quality bone there, but in fact you don't. You have bone that's debris. It's kind of like garbage. You know, you're building a house on garbage. There's a lot of stuff there. so. You want those osteoclasts to take away the dead, decaying bone. Very, very significant is this. What causes osteoporosis? Well, I'm going to tell you lack of exercise will, lack of flax oil will, lack of protein will, lack of minerals will. I also can tell you that soda pop can, but this next statement is going to really flip you out. Synthroid. I want you to go to Google. Type in the word Synthroid. Scroll down to about the fifth spot. They'll talk about it there because that's where I found it at. If you are on or a menopausal woman and you're taking Synthroid, one of the side effects of Synthroid is, and on a menopausal woman, osteoporosis. So you could be on Synthroid, cold hands, cold feet, Boniva, have a low thyroid and osteoporosis, and the osteoporosis is caused by the medication. Now, I had a lady that came into the office the other day, sad story, she's been unhealthy since she was a kid, and when she was a kid, she had chronic sinus problems. So you know what they did? I, I can't believe they used to do this, but they put radium, they did, they did radium treatments to her sinuses. Mm -hmm. Those were so intense that it destroyed her thyroid, so they took her thyroid out. True story. So she came to see us, sinuses are still affected, you know, I'm talking 50 years now. Thyroid's been taken out, gallbladder's out, they've just hacked her body to death. Hashimoto's, do you know from my experience it could all be traced back to not enough iodine in her body? That's one of the reasons that we do the urine iodine loading test. So that's also important. Did you see that statement there? Antacids decrease your body's ability yeah. to absorb calcium. 
Do you know that?